Welcome to In Real Time, where we as Heights Church are inviting you in for real conversations about leading people, organizations, and change in the new normal. We're hoping that our real discussions about our church's journey will help you as you reimagine and rebuild yours. here and welcome to In Real Time as we're having real conversations about leading people, organization, and change. And our topic today is Gen Z, devoted and faithful. I've got two Gen Zers that by the time we're done, you're going to say, wow, they're devoted and faithful. This is an amazing generation that has amazing potential. And we like to talk about this generation and what's working today. So I have two guests with me today from that generation. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves. And well, let's start with you. Yes, my name is Grace Lambert. I'm one of the Heights Young Adults. I also work with our high schoolers. I'm a student at William Jessup University studying youth ministry, and I am the church online coordinator. Nice. So like when somebody's joining our church online, you're right there chatting it up. Very cool. Very cool. And how about you? My name is Mason Sr. I am going to be a senior in the fall at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. I am studying communication with an emphasis in broadcasting and new media. Yeah. Um, I also serve with the production team here at Heights Church, and I'm part of the Young Adult Group like Grace as well. And uh, my two biggest passions outside of Jesus are football. I'm a huge Baltimore Ravens fan and Disneyland. Nice. nice. Okay, Baltimore Ravens, it's a bit of an outlier. It you is. are literally the only Ravens fan I know. I'm the only one I know as well. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you become a Ravens fan? So when I first got into football, any two football fans will recognize these names. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Oh. Terrell Suggs, that dominant defense. Yeah. So fun to watch. Made me fall in love with the team. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's good. That's good. Well, uh, we won't talk much football today, but maybe we could do that another time for sure. Yeah. So that's uh, that's great. That's good. That passion will take you far in life. Maybe. <laughs> like well, today we're going to be talking about uh, really young adult ministries within the local church. And this is such an important question about how can we do it in an effective way And obviously, we know this topic is an important topic for us as church leaders, uh, because this this is a bit of a difficult topic. We don't always know how to effectively reach out to young people, specifically that are in their early 20s at this point. And so we wanted to talk about some things that we're doing here at Heights Church, and then also about what's going on in your lives, to just give some sort of a reference point about some things that we have found are working, they're helpful, and they're really helping the two of you engage your faith, your desire to walk at the side of Christ. So when we're talking about ministry to young adults, there are variables, I realize, and I think they're important. Uh, Not all young adults go to college. Some of them are in trade schools. Some of them enter right into the workforce immediately. Uh, Some are going to universities like you guys are doing, start the junior college, four years. There's all kinds of things. Some people just take a year off Mm -hmm. and then another one and then another one. (laughs) So who knows? There's a lot of paths. But We're seeing Christian colleges, we see secular colleges, there's a lot of variables. And so we recognize that, and that's going to kind of come out in some of the questions that we're going to talk about today. Uh, We realize that where kids go, kids, I call you guys kids because, you know, I've got two children that are your ages at this point. I still call them kids, but I know you're not. (laughs) You're adults. So... um, But, you know, one of the ugly truths I will say that I can bring out right away about Heights Church as we're talking about this is we were doing some show prep on this. What we realized was, you know what, there are some great things young adults are talking about and that Pastor Justin, who we're going to meet in a couple of minutes, who leads our young adults ministry, uh, that he's doing that we thought, you know what, we need to be a lot more strategic about having those same conversations with our high schoolers, junior hires, and then on down even into our elementary school. So I want you to know the two of you have prompted us to 
to uh, have some, I think, better conversations about our student ministries and preparing mm-hmm. you for adulthood. So that's really good stuff. So thanks for that. Uh, what I do know, too, is the two of you are unique. For your generation, what's being said about your generation, the two of you are unique. First of all, you're devoted followers of Jesus, and that's amazing. So I know you already stand out in your generation for that. You are faithful and engaged in ministry, both of you. And uh, I know, Mason, you are attending Grand Canyon, which is obviously a completely different state. Yes. <laughs> but when you're there, you're serving in your college young adults group. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when you come back here, you're serving here in our young adults group as well. Yes. Uh, so that's wonderful. And obviously, you're serving in multiple areas for sure also. So I love that. Um, and then you're also a part of a group that is welcoming of a lot of different kinds of young people. When I see the young adults at our church, what I notice is that you're not all the same. Right. Right? (laughs) It's a very different group, and I love that. Yes. And it's important that that's true. It's it's what the church should be. It's a community of people that are following Christ. That's the commonality. Mm -hmm. If you were to see each other at a high school, I doubt this group would be together. That's not how this works. (laughs) <laughs> but when you put yourself together in a church, oh yeah, it's powerful. It's oh, wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um so here's a couple of questions I wanted to talk with you guys about. And I want you to think in terms of the pastors, the church leaders that are listening in. You're gonna give us a bit of a an inside look of what you think and what other Gen Zers are thinking that are sitting in our local churches that really have a desire to follow Christ. So here's the first question. What are you doing to keep yourself anchored in Christ? Mm. Because obviously what we're doing here is helping you, because you're at the age now where mom and dad can't make you go to church. <laughs> True. Those days are yeah. over. Uh-huh. You go because you actually want to. This is the decision you've made for your life. So personally then, I know outside of church, you're finding anchors. So what are you doing to anchor yourself in Christ? For me, I know that the young adults group has for several months now been doing daily Bible readings. So what we do is we select um, a few chapters from any book of the Bible that we choose or that Justin chooses. Mm -hmm. Um, And we select a period of time. Lately, we've been doing 21 days and we read those same chapters over a period of 21 days. And for me, that has become my chair time. So at any point during the day, I love to do it in the morning, but it really is at any point during the day. I just put in my AirPods, uh, turn on the Bible app and have it read to me. Sometimes I'll sit down and Mm -hmm. um, do like open my physical Bible and read it along with listening. Or if I feel extra busy that morning, I'll still put in my AirPods and listen to the scripture and do like some things that I need to get done. But regardless, I'm getting the word in daily because of that. And so that's one of the ways that I get grounded and that um, I guess this group, this young adults group has really helped me to maintain that chair time yeah. because it's super important that I stay grounded in that way. That's so good. That's what I've been doing. And for those of us listening in who don't know what chair time is, what's chair time, Grace? It's your quiet time that you spend alone with God each day. That's right. We talk about chair time all the time yes. here at Ice <laughs> Church constantly. That's so good. That's yes. so good. Uh, wonderful. So you're you're using chair time daily and this ba- this daily Bible reading mm-hmm. to stay anchored to Christ. That's yes, cool. So yes. what what verses or chapters are you guys in right now? So we are reading First uh, Peter, Second Peter, and First John. Wow. So I know it's real because you had an actual answer. You didn't have to think about. Yes. It. You're doing it. I'm doing That's it. a miracle in and of itself. Good job. Thank you. That's awesome. How about you, Mason? What are what are uh, some things that you're doing to anchor yourself in Christ? Yeah, so I'd say I have three main ones, um, like Grace. It's not the same reading, but I do have a Devo book called The Uncommon Life. It's by former NFL coach Tony Dungy. Love that. So I read that every morning. Yes. And that's a great way to start Football. my day. That's good. And then um, also I have a Bible, a plan on the Bible app that I do. It's a Bible in the year plan. I read that before bed every night. So just nice. starting and ending my day with that. Nice. Is that you version? That or is, is you it version. a different yes. one? Yep. Awesome app. Great. So those are that's number one. Uh, number two, 
is I am very selective about the music I listen to. I like to listen to a lot of worship music and just rest in God's promises yeah. and just be reminded of his goodness and his faithfulness mm. through music. I, you know, I love worship and my favorite part about Heights is the worship. So just, you know, just listening to that music, yeah. getting that stuff in your head, just knowing how much God loves you. It's made such a difference in my life. And my so third good. one is yep. community. Uh, community is huge. Heights Young Adult Group is a big source of community for me. Production team is also a source of community. Mm-hmm. Just like being away at college, like it was important for me to choose a Christian university. Um, I was between Grand Canyon and TCU over in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Mm-hmm. And I kind of realized that the people I'd be looking for, I'd more find them at Grand Canyon just because they have similar views to me. They value God the same way. So just getting plugged in with my college group down there yeah. and starting with their tech team as well was huge for me. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Grand Canyon University and William Jessup are not sponsors of our program, but if they decided they wanted to be, <laughs> they might be open to that. They might be open to that. That's so good. So you're doing devos in the morning and the evening, worship music. Sounds like you're doing some meditation on that as well. Yes, absolutely. That's so good, so good. And then plugged into your, your ministries. And I think this is a good time to bring out I think the dichotomy that's going on with you, Mason, that I think is really interesting for church leaders to hear. So the the group that we have here at our church, because you know, we're we're a bit of a smaller church in that uh, you know, our weekly attendance is gonna be somewhere around 11, 50, 12, somewhere in that range. And so our young adults group right now has grown uh, up to about that 1820 uh, size. But the group you're with at Grand Canyon, that's a that's a larger church, right? And yeah. it's a larger group. Yeah. Yeah. It's about, so they do it on Wednesday nights and it's about probably 150 to 200 college kids that go there. Okay. And yeah. so it's through a North Phoenix Baptist church. And so it's not like an official Grand Canyon thing, but it's like yeah. a very popular church. A lot of GCU students attend. Yeah. So I went first semester this year and it was hard to find community. I'm not going to lie. Cause when you have a big group like that, you can just fall right through the cracks. Yeah. You're not going to really be noticed if you're new. Mm-hmm. That's something I love about Heights. It's like a young, it's like a, a not, well, a younger group maybe, but also a smaller group. So you're going to have a better chance to find a community. People are going to notice you if you're new. Yeah. Yes. So with um, my group at, down in Arizona, I had to plug into a connect group, which is like their version of life groups here at the church Yeah. and through their tech team. And I'm glad that I found community there. I just feel like it's a lot easier almost in a smaller group because people notice and there are more, um, there's better resources and more time to have those one-on-one mm-hmm. interpersonal relationships. Yeah. So I think it's really important that churches realize that whatever size they are, that it's very meaningful, just start. Exactly. Just begin saying, I know our young adults group, I think when we started was probably six or seven. (laughs) And uh, within a year's time, it's tripled that. And that's because it's providing something powerful. So I was just being as an encouragement to our pastors listening in and just church leaders, just start something. Mm -hmm. Let's get together, create the community, create that encouragement in your faith, provide something and start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I love that. That's really good. Uh, Okay, so question then, let's flip it just a little bit. So we talk about what anchors you into Christ, but what anchors you to your church? My my friends, for sure. Yeah. Um, One of the biggest reasons I stayed at Heights is because I felt like I was welcomed Mm -hmm. um, into the community, Um, but that I also sensed that people just wanted to know me. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to church every Sunday, starting to go to the young adults group, um, which was, like, one or two times a week. Mm -hmm. But I quickly discovered, no, these, the people at this church, like, really want to get to know me. And that's what I had been praying for, like, in high school. Yeah. um, Was just a solid group of Christian friends my own age. And I didn't have a lot of that. And so... I came here having found that, and now I've been a part of this young adults group for about three and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've really seen the fruit from staying committed and faithful to this group because I really do have the relationships that I did pray for in high school. Um, And that is really what's like keeping me anchored here because I don't want to leave those relationships. Like I've done all this building and I love these people so much. Why would I leave? You know? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think you were talking to me earlier too, that 
it meant something to you, the pastors themselves, yes. even though the age gap is there, yeah. <laughs> but it meant something to you that it pastors did. wanted to get to know you as well, yes. that they would take the time to yes. talk to you. And I say that because sometimes as pastors, when it comes, depending on the age of a pastor, they may feel like, you know, they're intimidated. That, <laughs> that young person doesn't want to talk to me. That person in their 20s, you know, it's not that meaningful. Mm. They send somebody else or hope somebody else does mm. it. But you were sharing with me that that's actually the right. opposite. Yeah, based on my story and my experience with churches, because this is not the only church I've been at. I've been a part of several different church families growing up. Um, but I, having pastors want to get to know me was a huge step in making my faith my own. Yeah. Um, because I've been a Christian my whole life. Um, but that doesn't mean that I was as deep into my faith as I could be. You know, yeah. I didn't have the relationship with Jesus that I wanted to have. And to have pastors like actually take an interest in me, take an interest in mentoring me and pastoring me and getting mm -hmm. to know me, knowing my story, helping me get to where I want to be with my relationship with Jesus. Yeah. That was huge for me. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely not underestimate the impact a pastor can make on a young adult, because I think that relationship is super important. Wow. That's really good. I think you encouraged a lot of people there. That's <laughs> really good. Uh, Mason, how about you? How would you say uh, that, or I should say, uh, what are you doing to keep yourself anchored to your church? Yeah, I'd say the main thing, community, I'm going to talk about it once again, just yeah. an emphasis on it, just really getting plugged in. And seeing how you can serve, like, you know, I just started a couple of weeks ago serving with a production team. And so it's just been nice to, you know, do something and gain knowledge for the field I want to go into and find community through the amazing guys and girls that help out there. Yeah. So that's the main thing for me, community. And just a combination, Grace alluded to it, about just pastors having personal relationships with them. Yeah. I really appreciate how Justin takes the time to get to know us one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. He talks to us collectively and individually. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that and put in that intentional effort. And also just you, Pastor Craig, talking to us on the tech team and all of us individually, not just as a collective. So just like seeing people as individuals rather than a whole group yeah, is really important to me. And just like building those personal relationships with pastors, it'll make you, you know, want to come back and it'll give you the motiv motivation to be like, oh, this person's looking forward to seeing me. Like, I'm not just a person sitting, listening to their sermon. Like yep. mm -hmm. I'm a person that they want to get to know and minister to. So I just really love that about yes. heights. Oh, that's great. That's great. This is really encouraging you guys. Um, what would you say that um, that that would help you? Well, you think. Let me rephrase the question. If you're thinking about the young adults and what it's providing for you, and we may have already talked about some of these things here, but when you think about that young adults group, there, there's so much that you could do with your time, <laughs> right? There's a lot of distractions out there, a lot of entertainment, <laughs> a lot of things you could be doing. What is it that is going on in that young adults group <laughs> that either here at Heights or here at Heights and also at this place at Nan uh, Grand Canyon University for you, that church there, what is it providing for you that you just say, yeah, I just want more of that? Honestly, like the young adults group, they're some of my best friends. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just a group that we go to like study the Bible. And of course we do that Yes, because um, it's important to us. But it's so much more than that, yeah. you know, um, like we hang, we often like some of us will get there early, like before the time the group actually starts, because mm. we just want more time together. Mm -hmm. And then the time starts for the group. We, we talk, we have fun, we laugh together. Um, we do Bible, we do the Bible study with whatever we're reading, or if there's a specific topic that we have questions on, we discuss that too. And it's more than just, just in talking to us yeah. it's <laughs> and we do love it when he does but there's freedom within the group to discuss like our ideas yeah like everyone has a voice in that group mm -hmm. and then um not just the bible study but also afterwards we love to hang out and play games together and mm -hmm. listen to music and um we've started like like some of us will stay even even longer to just have deep conversations yeah um, and it's just that connection that just building those deep relationships mm -hmm. is what keeps me at that group. And it's yeah. what it's like, it's, it feeds me so much in that group. So those that's, are all of the elements really that good. keep me there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's wonderful. Cause when I think about it, you know, pastors have a decision on how they're going to structure a gathering like this and, and they may feel like, Hey, 
if it's going to last an hour, hour and a half, then that means I've got to teach that whole time. <laughs> the answer would be, don't no. do that. Yes. <laughs> don't. It no. honestly feels like youth group. Yes. But for young adults. Fun. Yes. yes. Community. <laughs> laughter. Yes. Just go get the energy out. Yep. And yes, the teaching is important, yes. but there's so much else that's important right. also. Mm -hmm. And so you got to make room for that. So yes. yeah, that's great. Yep. Love that. Love that you get to air your ideas and and process through those. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes with yes. Pastor Justin. Uh, Mason, how about you? What is it that keeps you coming back? Yeah, my answer is very similar to Grace. Just like you kind of you were just alluding to, Pastor Craig. Just a lot of ministers will use that time and be like, "Well, I'm a pastor. I know the most, so I got to throw all this information out at you." Like, yeah. One thing I love that <laughs> Justin does is he will let our thoughts guide the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like Grace said, everybody has a voice. Mm -hmm. And so I just yeah. really appreciate that. And Justin will spit out information at us if we ask him to. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that and just like how easygoing he is about it and just like letting us talk. And just like Grace said, community is a huge part of it. Like yeah. playing nine square apples to apples, video games together, whatever it is. Like we just enjoy each other's time and fellowship and there are times we'll be there for like four or five hours, you know, having yep. deep conversations and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, this is just a group, like we have our, our group chat and stuff. And there have been several times where I've said, Hey, I have this situation. Can you guys pray for me? Mm -hmm. And I'm met with several responses and I'm just feeling so blessed and wrapped around in prayer. Wow. So just like doing life together with the community, having fun while also growing closer to each other and God is what keeps me coming yes. back. Yeah, yeah. That's so, so good. Okay. So you guys have been Awesome. So love your insights and just be able to hear how you think. If you could speak to pastors of local churches right now, whether they're uh, pastors or uh, lay leaders who are involved in young adults or thinking about providing a young adults, what, what would you say to them about your generation and the ministry of a local church to them? Mm -hmm. How could you encourage them? I spoke on this a little bit earlier, but to just reemphasize um, the importance of building relationships, yeah. like one-on-one -on -one relationships with those people. Of course, you don't have to meet with coffee for each young with each young adult once a week because nobody has the capacity for that. Yeah. Um, but to at least just, I don't know, take the time, like even if it's just for like 15 minutes, mm -hmm. 15 minutes like on a Sunday night or whatever, just having a conversation about, hey, how are you doing? Like, what can I be praying for you about? What are you struggling with in your faith right now? Because mm -hmm. um, those are the conversations that over time, like having multiple of those over time will really build that relationship. And as a young adult, like those things mean the world to me. Yeah. So just reemphasizing that for sure. Yeah. So just, just take a couple minutes and care. Yes. Let's <laughs> listen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's something yeah. any of us can do. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. It's not a silver bullet. Right. It's just And we caring. do want to hear from pastors. Like yes. we do want to hear from them. Um, even though there is that age gap. But honestly, there's something so valuable in seeking insight and wisdom from people who are that much older than you. Mm. Because you just made a whole lot of people feel really good right now. <laughs> like, oh, there's hope. <laughs> they actually want to hear what I have to say. That's because, awesome. I mean, I, I know for me and like being with a whole bunch of like having so many friends my age, it's like I've noticed that a lot of times like my, people my age will seek, you know, advice or insight from people who are closer to our age, which there's nothing wrong with that. No, not um, at all, not at all. Especially if you wanna like share perspectives or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I've found it extremely valuable to search for mentors who are like 20, 30 plus years older than me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they've lived that much longer than I have. And so mm -hmm. they definitely have something to speak into any situation that I'm facing. And yeah. so that's also something I'm grateful for that pastors are able to do for me is provide that that's wisdom. Good. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. I'm glad you call it wisdom. <laughs> How about you, Mason? What would you say as an encouragement to pastors and leaders of local churches with yeah. this group? 
So um, I'm completely blanking on the verse about this, but there's a verse that talks about how the harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the workers are few. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so easy to look at our generation and say, they hate Jesus. They hate, like, they agree with things that we don't agree with, like, and all that. And there's just a lot of political unrest as a result of that. So it's like, yeah. it's easy to look at us and think, oh, there's nobody, there's nobody good in this generation. There's like no hope for our future and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, there is like I being on a, um, being at Grand Canyon, a Christian college, I've seen so many college students just passionate for Jesus and wanting more of him. Oh, so good. just like remembering yeah. that, even though, and not letting one bad experience, like define your ministry mm-hmm. or define Gen Z in this case. Mm-hmm. So just like staying faithful and just like keep going. Yeah. And like, you're going to find those young adults that want to get to know you, that you can be a mentor to and give wisdom and you know, do life with honestly. So yeah. just like keep going and pressing on because Gen Z is full of, is really just, is full of, you know, people that are passionate for Jesus and yeah. just not letting what society thinks or one person define that for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. You just encourage a whole lot of people too. That's awesome. What I heard is, is that you guys actually do care yes. uh-huh. about do. the leadership of the local churches yes. and you want them to invest in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's wonderful. Well, I really appreciate the conversation we've been having. And now we're going to switch gears a little bit here. And I just want to hear for the last couple of minutes from Pastor Justin about what he's specifically doing. And this is going to be very important for for our leaders to listen about some intentional things that they can do. And again, there's no silver bullets here, but there are some really good gold nuggets here for us to recognize that these are things any of us can do to really make an impact. And so we're going to pause for just a quick second, and uh, we're going to have Justin pop in. Two, one. And we're back. Okay, Pastor Justin is now joining us. Pastor Justin Orr leads our Young Adults Ministry, along with a lot of other things. That is a true statement. You lead this group now since last summer. You've been doing a phenomenal job. and. Um, I would like for us to just pick your brain here for these last couple of minutes. And I want to ask you the question about this. Uh, obviously, this group is not hundreds at this point, but no. we we started with some smaller numbers, mm-hmm. and it has definitely grown. And I would say the numbers don't tell the real story not about the significant encouragement and growth that's happening in our young adults. I happen to know this because I have two, Mm -hmm. my two kids are in this group, and I know that their faith has been significantly impacted in a great way because of it. I know the rest of their life is going to be impacted by these years that they're spending in the ministry, no pressure on you. But it's important we recognize that, and so I want to ask you this, what are you intentionally doing to equip these young people for the environments that they're in now and the ones to come? So one, it's a great question. There's Thank a, you. I appreciate that. There's I really a couple like things I that I, there's a couple <laughs> things in the midst of this that I, I, I just want to recognize in the process is I realized early uh, sometime last summer, I had a privilege to doing a, a, a trip to Cuba and a missions trip. I got to meet some young adults mm-hmm. and I realized God just hit me like lightning. These are, this is the future in the face of the church. Mm-hmm lean in. And as I began thinking about the young adults that I serve alongside and that I've, cause Tim and I were kind of partnering with, with the young adults for a while. And mm-hmm. I was just going through the list of names as I was sitting there and I was like, well, this person serves and leads, this person serves and leads. Oh my gosh, this person serves and leads. Oh my gosh, this person serves and leads. And I realized this entire group with very few exceptions serves yeah. our church in some capacity. And I went, how I, I, like it would be dumb of me not to step in and help develop them. Yeah. Like I just, so I, 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 I couldn't say no mm-hmm. at that point. God had just put it so hard on my heart about that. And one of the shifts that took place in that same thought process was the idea of teaching versus training. And this is what I brought back and what I've brought to the young adults is I am not here to teach you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to train you. Mm-hmm. And Grace, I, I guarantee you that if I ask her the question, what's the difference between teaching and training? She could tell you because I talk about it all the time. Should we put her on the spot oh right now? Ready? Can you Should do it? Should we do it? Maybe. I, I, oh, what is training? Uh, training is actually doing something. Mm-hmm. What does it require? It requires practice, practice and doing something. And repetitions. Repetition. That's right. Wow. Yeah. 
like, you knew the answer. <laughs> so it's the idea we did of not doing, set that up. That's it's, it. it's the idea of doing the reps, right? Yeah, you go to the right. gym, you're going to do a deadlift. You've got to do the deadlift over and over and over and over and over again. You, if you're yeah. playing football, you have to run the play over and over and over and over yes. again. We don't do that in the church. Mm -hmm. We teach you something and hope that it sticks. Mm -hmm. And I had to go, no, there's got to be a shift here. If I'm teaching or if I'm training leaders, I need to help them do the repetitions. And so we got really strategic with Bible reading. Grace talked about it because she does it faithfully. Mm -hmm. um, we read chunks of the Bible. Now, it depends. Uh, right now, it's First Peter, Second Peter, and First John. And I do it too. This is a, it's not just something that I tell them to do and wish the best of luck. And mm -hmm. I don't do, I, I do what I say I'm going to do. Like if I'm going to challenge you to do it, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. So my yeah. wife and I both do this. And the reason why is it's very intentional. One, we want to get you, we want you to do the reps. The more you spend in the same passages, what we find is there's a familiarity that rises. Mm -hmm. So people go, oh, no, that's the first Peter chapter two is where that came from. Mm -hmm. um, we, we started initially with the book of James, and we've just worked our way through different books over the, the last year. And then what we do is for the conversations at, uh, on Sunday nights is I break open one of those books. And I go, okay, we're going to pick up on chapter two, start. And we start having discussions and we ask questions and we let, I let mm. them guide the conversation. Yeah. What questions do you have? What do you see? What do you, what does it see? What does it, what, what do you see? What are your observations? What does it say? What does it mean? And how does it apply? Mm -hmm. And it's through that, that I believe what I see is their, their literacy of the Bible rising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, that was a huge part of it. Is, is training them in yeah. the Bible. Like, I yeah. want you to fall in love with it. Um, the second piece is apologetics. Um, one, I hold a master's degree in Christian apologetics. It's where I felt God call me to, and now I understand why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because your gen has, the, you, I mean, gosh, they're just inundated with bad ideas all the time. Yeah. They're everywhere. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, you guys are inundated yeah. with bad ideas. Mm -hmm. And bad ideas about the Bible and bad ideas about Jesus and bad ideas about the reliability, all this stuff. And so one of the things that I do is I bring apologetics topics and talk mm -hmm. about just the reliability of the Bible, the nature of truth, that it's knowable. It's, you know, you can know these things, those kinds of concepts. There's really only about a handful that culture attacks on a regular basis. They just do it from 15 different angles. Yeah. So if you can get people grounded in those five truths and those five ideas, mm. they, man, they have a foundation. They go, yeah, that's just dumb. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, I've already heard that <laughs> dumb heard idea, that but let's, let's go, let's go. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. like inoculating them to a bad idea. So you mm. give them the bad idea, you walk them through the bad idea and then you show them the truth Yeah. and you help them train themselves in the truth in the process. And so, I, uh, those are some of the big things that I do, um, right out of the gate with the big group. Yeah. Um, if you step back a couple years, the other thing that I've, I've chosen to do is intentionally leaning into the relationships. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you. Tell me about your life. Tell me what's going on. Uh, and here's the thing. It's gotta be on purpose. Mm -hmm. These conversations don't happen by accident. They yeah. they happen because I go to them and I say, hey, let's go grab some coffee. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's go do this thing. Hey, why don't you meet with me before young adults for 30 minutes or yeah. meet me at five? I yeah. just want to I just want to hear what's going on. Yeah. Um, and during that and through that, what happens is you get much more practical. Here's some general Bible guidelines to help train you through this process. Here are mm -hmm. some ideas that to 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 give you what you know the ethics of this. All that kind of stuff. And so, and, and it's not just me. My wife is doing it with the ladies now. So um, we are, our goal is to just train and equip this group that we have with us. Yeah. So, so good. So if, good. If, if I'm yeah. thinking about the leaders that are out there, I started with who was in front of me mm -hmm. and I started intentionally leaning in. Yeah. And I started intentionally Bible, tr just training and talking to having conversations about my faith. Mm -hmm. This is what my faith means to me. Here's how it works in real life in my life. Here's, here's what I, what do you, how does it work for you? And get to know them because yeah. when you do that, it, it is, it, it pays dividends down the road. Mm -hmm. you, you find the longevity with them because this group is unique. Mm -hmm. They're not in, they're not kids anymore. Right. So they're not right. dragged by their parents necessarily. They're adults, so I'm going to treat you like an adult. I'm going to talk to you like an mm -hmm. adult. I'm not going to treat you as though you don't understand or can't understand hard concepts. Yeah. In fact, they ask me for the really hard theology all the time. 
<laughs> yeah. So, all the time. It's yes. like a test. And I'm like, do you really want to know this? Or are you just doing this to mess with me? <laughs> no, we want to know. And so we sometimes will chase those rabbit trails and they love it. It's, it's a lot of fun. But I, I just think that there's, um, there's something about leaning into the ones that are in front of you. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If it's two, it's three. Right. It, that's where you start. Absolutely. That's really good. And I, I think that's the important piece. No matter what size your church is, right. start. You said it. Just show me that you care. Take yeah. a personal interest. And mm-hmm. this is the, these are the conversations that you would have. Yep. And um, just start there, and yeah. then and then see where God takes it. But you gotta, you have to start somewhere, right? Yes. And then let's see where it goes from there. But what I know is, it's worth the time. It's Absolutely. worth the effort. Definitely. And I know that you could impact someone's life. It's the future powerfully. of the church. Yeah, it really they are, is. They are the future leaders and pastors of our churches. Yeah. And so, yeah. it would be silly to not lean in some way. That's exactly right. I love it. Well, thank you, Grace, for being with us today. Thank Thank you, you, Mason, who is off camera right now. And thank you, Justin, for joining me today for In Real Time as we're having conversations about leading people, organization, and change. And if you like this episode, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, the bell notification so that you will not miss one episode as it drops. And we'll see you next time on In Real Time. Thank you.